How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. So today we are going to take a look at the Z590E Strix motherboard from ASUS and see how it pairs up with the newly released 11th generation Intel i9-11900K and just see how it performs with some benchmarks and so on. Now as for the differences between the Z490 and the Z590, it isn't really too big especially because some of the Z490 boards were actually future proof for the new 11th generation Intel CPUs. Now the differences on a paper is that the Z590 board now does fully support PCI Express 4. It now also supports eight lanes for a desktop management interface with the CPU instead of a four. For a memory, the Z590 also now supports a memory speeds up to 5,333 from 4,800 with a XMP overclock, of course. You also lastly get support for more USB connections with now three USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 connectors and up to 10 now from the four USB 3.2 Gen 2 connectors. So the Z590, I would say, is more aimed for all out options that most gamers might not usually actually need, but content creators might actually want these and some hardware enthusiasts might appreciate more as well. But with all of that out of the way, let's move on towards the Strix Z590E. And starting off with pricing, it is currently retailing for around $380 on Amazon or around 8,600 Rand for here in South Africa. Now, Compared to the Z490e, it's around $80 or more, around 500 Rand, which isn't really that much. Now, taking a look at what you get inside the box, along with the motherboard, you do get the standard manual, driver, DVD, for some reason you still need that, and also a welcome card with some stickers. You also get the Wi-Fi antenna, four black SATA cables, some small cable ties, some rubbers are for the M.2 SSDs, and also an M.2 Q latch, which it does make installing M.2s a lot easier, and I do actually really like those. Uh, then you also get your ROG keychain, if you want to bring it up, an ROG graphics card holder, and an additional 40 millimeter VRM fan with some screws, which we'll get into a bit later. Now take a look at the design of the board. The Z590E does look a pretty different compared to the previous Z490E, but still keeps the styling on a point with a full black look. The biggest difference is between the IO cover with just the holographic ROG eye now there, and on the chipset, the heat spreader being more separated from the M.2s. The RGB does also differ a small bit with the small a logo in the corner on the chipset with the Strix also on the top of the M.2 heat spreader, which does actually look quite good, but you'll just have to disconnect the entire connector if you want to remove the heat spreader. That, that's all. Moving on towards the CPU, the Z590 still uses the newer LGA1200 socket and supports both a 10th and also the new 11th generation CPUs out of the box. With the Z490 motherboards, you will need to update the BIOS first before you can support the new 11th generation CPUs. Now, as for the VRMs, I was not able to find the exact setup that they use, but it does have a 14 plus 2 doubling power stage same as the Z490E board. The Z490E used a seven phase ASP 1900B controller with a 50 amp power rating. And for the MOSFETs, it used a 14 SIC 639 10 amp FETs. Now I'm mentioning this because again, I'm not exactly sure what the Z590E is using, but most likely it's either going to be the same or it's going to be a step above that. So we just want to give you guys more information on that. Now the VRM cooling setup does look a bit different, but it still has a beefy multi-layer black heat spreader. Plus you still also have the fan to help reduce the temperatures even further, although it does produce a bit of a noise there. So just keep that in mind. But now as for how the VRMs performed from our testing, it didn't have any issues keeping it cool at all, hovering around 74 degrees in our blender workload with also our OC applied. But now speaking of overclocking, 
What a mess it has been with the new 11900K. The Z590E, just like most of the other ROG boards, was pretty simple, super easy to overclock with also a very user-friendly interface on the, on the BIOS side. But the 11900K is just not the best CPU to overclock. And a lot of other reviewers mentioned that as well, having just a lot of issues getting a stable overclock. So for our testing, we did manage to get a 5.1 gigahertz OSC on all cores, but it wasn't the most stable. So we did lower that to 5 gigahertz at 1.4 volts on all cores, and that gave us a more performance out. Now, this was no problem for the Z590 and I kind of think that it's a bit overpowered for the CPU to be honest just because the CPU doesn't overclock that much. Hopefully we can get um, possibly later uh, a firmware update for the CPU along with the motherboard and so on. Possibly that could help boost it a bit as again some of the stuff doesn't look the best for the 11 uh, 900k but now uh, moving on towards our memory the z590e does support a max of 128 gigs on the four dual channel ddr4 demo slots with overclocks up to 5333 megahertz all the way to the max. Moving on to the PCI Express slots, this again is where most of the bigger differences come into play. We have a full support for PCI Express up for now. Now, like I mentioned before, some of the other Z490 motherboards already supported PCI Express up for both for graphics card and also M.2 storage. Now, it was just the CPU that was actually needed. So uh, the 11th generation now supports that. But unfortunately, the previous Z490E from Asus did not support PCI Express 4 at all. So this is then where the newer Z590E has the upper hand and would be needed if you are looking for PCI Express 4. The Z590E does have three full-size PCI Express slots with the top two being a PCI Express 4 running on the CPU and then the bottom one being a PCI Express 3 running off the chipset. The top is running at a full 16x speed and the middle one at 8x and then the bottom at a 4x. SLI is also supported if by chance you actually wanted to use that. Now the top 2 also does feature ASUS's safer slot technology for a better durability when installing a GPU and also to help prevent a sag when installing some of the beefy streaks of graphics cards as well. Now moving on towards the storage, you do get the standard 6 SATA 3 ports which is nothing new there but now you also get a four m.2 slots the top two are being a piece of express are four and the bottom two are being a piece of express are three it is worth mentioning that the top piece of express are four slot is only piece of express are four and not a three so it will only work with the new 11th generation cpus and a not 10 but the second m.2 does work on both at 10 and also the 11th generation cpus and both on a piece of express four and also three. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that when the bottom PCI Express 3 is being used, SATA 5 and 6 will be disabled because they do share a lane. So, there. Also, SATA 2 will be disabled when using the shorter M.2 in a SATA mode. However, all of that is mentioned in the manual. So, just check that out if you are looking to pair it completely out with M.2s and SATAs. Now, taking a look at the side for IO you do get a bit of a upgrade here compared to the Z490e. You get one HDMI port, a DisplayPort version 1.4, your clear CMOS button, your BIOS flashback button. You get two USB 2.0 ports, one being your BIOS USB port. You get a four USB 3.2 Gen 1 port, three USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, one USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 port, and also also two Intel 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports, which is very handy, along with the Intel Wi-Fi 6 
E A X two at ten, and then also a Bluetooth five point two for wireless connectivity. Uh, for audio, you do get an optical SPDIF outboard and then also your standard five audio jacks with the Supreme FX ALC 4080 Kodak with a, a two-way AI noise cancellation, which does actually perform pretty well as we have uh, seen a similar technology on some of their other gaming headsets. Now, as for the internal connectors, you do get uh, the following. You get a one USB uh, 3.2 Gen 2 type C header, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 type C headers, two USB 2 headers, a Thunderbolt 4 header. Now as for power, you do get your standard 24 pin for your motherboard and also an 8 plus 4 pin for your CPU. Now cooling wise, you do get 8 PWM connectors for all of your different components ranging from your CPU, your fan and also for all of your pumps and so on. Now as for all of the RGB goodness, again you do get a bunch of RGB be on the board itself but along with that you do get three addressable to five volt led strip headers and then a one 12 volts rgb led header and then also for some additional features you do get your q code led indicator which is always very handy a cpu over a voltage jumper and a temperature sensor header as well but now with all of that out of the way let's get into the benchmarks and see how the z590e performed with r1190 100k now for all of that we did compare it to our 9900k as well we wanted to compare it with the 10900k but unfortunately uh, we did get a dead sample and we weren't able to uh, benchmark it uh, compared with uh, the others so from the benchmarks the 11900k did outperform the 9900k in all of the benchmarks but not uh, by the amount that we would have liked to see especially for a new flagship CPU. All in all, uh, both uh, gaming and more productivity benchmarks was uh, good and uh, still performs quite well, but again, it's not on the level that we would have uh, liked to uh, see, and at the same price point, uh, possibly for cheaper, there might be some other CPUs that could be a better uh, buy. And again, uh, this board, from all of our <laughs> testing, does look to outperform in this CPU, so just keep that in mind. So now with all of that out of the way, this board is quite kitted out with a plenty of connectors and features. And compared to the Z490e, the Z590e does have a few nice upgrades, which might make it a good buy for some people. But I won't really say that it's for everybody. If you're just a gamer, then the Z490e will probably be a great board and you can get something like the 1000K to pair it up with. Uh, but if you're looking for all our performance and if you're possibly more of a content creator uh, then this board might be a good option with that PCI Express uh, 4 connectors allowing for much faster uh, transfer speeds which again might not be that necessary for gamers at this point. But along with that, the USB 3.2 Gen 2X2 additional ports is a very nice addition, along with the extra 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, which I personally do quite enjoy. So all in all, just make sure that you get the board that's going to fit your needs best. Uh, but I even will say, if you do get the new board, you might even want to pair it up with the 10900K instead of the 11900K. That's just where it's at. Either you can pair it up with the the new 11600k and overclock that one as well which did look to perform a pretty good from some of the other reviews that we have seen just make sure you get the one that fits your needs best but overall the rog strix z590e is just a pretty beast of a board no exceptions there uh, of course we didn't really think otherwise so if you want to get a board for yourself i will leave links in the video description to get it a big thanks to asus of africa for sending the board over for review if you guys enjoyed this video please like share comment comment like always and i'll check all of you next time cheers guys